Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I, 16 female, don't know how to summarize it, but I'll try. My parents divorced about five years ago. My father remarried a year after divorce, and I now have a one-year-old half-sister. My mother remarried a little before COVID, and I have a stepsister, Jazz, 11 female, whose mother passed away when she was eight. I get along with my father's side, with stepmother and baby sister, but cannot get along with my new stepfather and stepsister. With me, so far I hope. The reason I don't get along with Jazz is because she likes to act up and I cannot deal with her when she does. The adults aren't helping either. I have to think before speaking to her, else she may spin up some wild tales to complain and cry buckets of tears. She is also very sensitive and I have learnt to avoid her as much as possible. My mother always told me to be understanding because she has a traumatic past and that she is still getting used to our new family, getting counseled and such. I had to hold back my anger when she destroys my things, being a witch to me and my mother, and her father would just pretend he is not there whenever she loses her temper. Lucky for me, during my stay with my mother, I still have my aunt, who stays nearby, and I would visit her whenever I have the time and occasionally stay over for the weekends. She would bring me out for shopping and buy me things in the past and is a very cool person in general. She is busier now, but still always have time for me and even gave me her spare key so that I can go to her place even when she is not home. My mother had an argument with my aunt a week ago, and she now forbids me going to her because it upsets Jazz. That bee went crying to her father and mother, saying she feels it's unfair that I have an aunt who spoils me while she has nobody to turn to. My mother got the nerve to ask my aunt to buy things for Jazz too, and she refused. And that was why they quarreled, and then I was forbid to visit her anymore. So I went visiting my aunt anyway, even after being told not to. And then my mother got very angry at me, saying that I am being a selfish brat with no consideration for my sister, while Jas giggled behind her. I told her out loud with Jas listening that I only have one sister, and that is my baby sister on my father's side. I don't give a crap what Jazz feels, and I will still be going to my aunt, and there is nothing stopping me from doing so. What can she do? Lock me up? Is it even legal? Confiscate my phone? My dad bought it. Kick me out? I wish. So I am at my aunt's house again, with my mother texting me how I upset Jazz, was as she had a meltdown again. My aunt said she doesn't mind me staying over, but I should make it up with them later, as it is not good for long term. She showed me her phone too, and I could see that my mother and other aunt, youngest, is blaming her for what I did, and I feel sorry for her, but not for that little crap jazz. So am I the a-hole for openly defying my mother on this? Edit. My aunt is my mother's younger sister. She lives alone, and I sometimes stay over for a bit whenever I fight with Jazz. Or with my mother, stepfather over Jazz. I am not sure if I can live with her for long because it was never brought up, but she gave me her spare keys and said I can go to her place whenever I want. Jazz is currently under counseling, or therapy some of you call it. I am not sure if she is making progress, but she hasn't changed much. I would love to live with my father, but he is currently living with my stepmother's parents because one of them is sick and I don't really want to disturb them right now. At the very least, at my mother's side, I can get to look for my aunt. OP is not an a-hole. OP's aunt is right that OP has got to find a long-term solution, but that solution should take the realities into account. OP's stepsister shouldn't get all the priority. And just because OP's stepsister doesn't have a cool aunt doesn't mean that OP should stop seeing hers. I, female 29, lost my brother a few weeks ago. He had a heart condition. I helped my family with his care. My dad needed all the help he could get because he was literally losing control. My husband and I have been married for two years. There's an ongoing conflict between him and my dad. 
There's no specific reason, otherwise we would have been able to work things out. They're both being stubborn and defensive and just disagree on a lot of things. I didn't know what to do because of the constant fights between them whenever my husband sees my dad. I'll have to admit, my husband is the one who refuses to have a civil talk. My husband stopped coming while my brother was sick because my dad told him he couldn't deal with him while taking care of my brother. My husband said that my dad was trying to exclude him from family function and belittle him in front of everyone. He caused a scene at the hospital and went no contact. When my brother passed away, my dad called me and told me he didn't want my husband to come to the funeral. From his voice, my dad was devastated. Everyone was. My husband insisted on going. He told me he wanted to come with me to support me and extend his condolences. My dad saw him there, but he didn't say anything. Everyone was nervous. My dad extended his hand, but my husband refused to extend his. Everyone saw that, and it was disrespectful. My husband then was telling other family members how my dad wronged him. I told him this wasn't the time, but he kept talking. My dad heard that. He told me to ask my husband to leave immediately. I told my husband and he got mad and threw a fit saying my dad had no right to tell him to leave. My dad then got into an argument with him and my husband told him loudly that he's just trying to gain sympathy and that he never cared about my brother and he was just pretending to care. Claimed my dad didn't even cry. I was ready to leave with him but after what he said I sided with my dad and told him to leave. He acted shocked and after a few minutes he left. I went home with my dad and we cried together. My family was quiet the whole time. I started getting calls from my husband. I couldn't help but yell at him for what he said and he tried to blame my dad who just lost his own son. I told him I'm staying with my dad for a few days because I was really mad he hurt my dad and me like that. He said I was being unfair and I shouldn't have let my dad kick him out even though he tricked me into coming so he could badmouth my dad. No one appreciated his behavior and said he crossed the line. Yes, the a-hole, for allowing husband to continue to come around and provoke OP's father during his time of bereavement. OP was going to originally leave with him after he blatantly disrespected her father by not shaking his hand. So that tells me that OP is an enabler for this childish and grossly disrespectful behavior. I'm happy OP finally stood up for her family, but I suspect OP allowed a lot of disrespect to be swept under the rug. My partner and I have been together for 21 years. We have a 15-year-old daughter together and live together, but we never got married. For the first three years of our relationship, my partner and I lived out of our car and then later lived out of a trailer. He was not college educated. He was not college educated and but was trying to build a business and I was working my way through an associate's degree while taking minimum wage jobs. Around the fourth year of our relationship, my partner became confident about a certain business prospect and invested all of what we both had into the business. The business investment ended up tanking horribly and my partner said that the only reason he stayed alive in the midst of the depression he felt during the aftermath was because of me. I write about this because every time our relationship for the past five years comes to a breaking point in my eyes. My partner cites these early years where we only had each other and desperately needed each other to convince me to stay. And it always works because I feel like we've been through so much together and nobody else will have the potential to appreciate a history with me the way my partner has caused to. My partner started to earn steady income from his real estate ventures around 10 years ago. But it was after meeting his now business partner and friend six years ago that his earnings skyrocketed. However, around that time, my partner started to get irritated with me and our daughter very often. During arguments, he would start screaming at me at the top of his lungs and calling me every single degrading name in the book. He would tell me that I needed to get my loose skin and my stomach cultured because the stretch marks and everything had to be some kind of disease. He made a practical joke out of me when he bragged to his friends that when I tell him we needed therapy, he would agree and then just not show up. He used to tell my daughter that she could tell him anything, but now it's been more and more about how we all needed to be more grateful. When I told him I was happy for him and proud after he closed the deal, he snapped. 
My success isn't your success, okay? I have caught him cheating two times prior. The first time was with a sugar baby in graduate school, 24 female, that he was giving monthly allowances. He told me that he refused to deal with my loose skin and stretch marks and that I grossed him out by talking about my medical issues. I had pelvic inflammatory disease. Too much, and that if I worked out more, I wouldn't have medical issues. The second one was a 28-year-old real estate agent that worked near the city where he takes the most business trips. He said that his job is stressful and she was there. After that affair, he told me that he had fetishes. I tried to indulge him, but he would never stop when I told him I wanted to and would compare me to how others typically reacted. Then my world fell apart a couple of days ago when my 15-year-old came in and cried, telling me that her dad was having an affair and that the mistress, 24 female, had messaged her multiple times on Facebook several months back but that her dad made her afraid to tell me. She said that her dad ignores and snaps at her after he gets in a fight with me and is nice to her when things are well between us. The message was around February and it told her that she and my partner were having an affair and that she deserved to know. Also, a bunch of other nasty stuff. Soon after, she told me the mistress had blocked her on Facebook and everything else, but she still has the messages. Her dad said this was just a crazy person and asked her if she wanted and thus was trying to break her parents apart. And then said that a lot of her classmates with divorced parents rarely see their dads and struggle a lot financially and even told her some stuff about how her health insurance would probably be non-existent the moment she turns 18 and mine would be gone the moment we separated. I confronted my partner and he admitted to having a two-year affair with the woman. And he said that she gave him the things I would deny him s, and I always made him feel less than. I told him I didn't want to see him right now, and he asked if I was seriously kicking him out of the house he bought and I never put a dime into. I told him to leave, and he did. After he left, my daughter became super distraught and said that she is getting panic attacks just thinking about the possibility of the mistress becoming her stepmother and begged me to take my partner back if it meant avoiding her ever having to live under the same roof as her. I looked through my partner's things and went through financial records that he had banned me from around six years ago. I found out that he had recently made payments to a doctor's office that was an OBGYN and very expensive jewelry store purchases. I looked it up and saw it was indeed an OBGYN office that advertised itself as catering to the elite. I then saw a string of iCloud messages, one of which said that if worse comes to worse, that I could not find out about the baby until it was born, for financial reasons. When my partner came back to get some of his stuff, I told him to tell me if he got her pregnant. He admitted it and then started begging for forgiveness and citing that we've been through so much and that he will always care for me if I still allow him to. He refused to tell me when he found out about the baby or when it would be due and told me that he was supporting their baby and the mother to his best ability, but that whatever she did, she deserved privacy. I asked him if he promised her marriage and he said no and denied ever buying her a ring. Then he broke down and said that he did have great affection for her, but he wanted to work things out with me. What do I do? I don't even know if he wants to work things out. My sister told me that she thinks he just doesn't want me to file for child support before the child is born, because that would mean less money. My daughter is depressed and always in hysterics. She tries to reach out to her father and begs me to call him and asks if we can't work this out. I don't know whether I should try. A part of me still cannot forget all those years we spent together of our turbulent youth and how much he once meant to me. I don't want to believe that my partner will not come around in terms of being affectionate towards our daughter because he's mad at me. But I feel like I don't know him anymore. I also feel that my daughter will resent the fact that I'm already looking for jobs and will be the primary breadwinner, which I don't care about since I've been beyond poor, but of course it might hurt my daughter. OP needs to document all of this and leave this SOB. OP needs to explain to her daughter that this is not just about the affair. It's the culmination of years of abuse she hasn't seen, without going into detail. And that if she doesn't want to be around him much, she'll fight for that.
OP should get her a therapist, and herself one too. OP should take him to the cleaners. Who cares if they have been through a lot together? I am a 28 male. My mom married when I was 16 and brought my little ex-stepbrother who was two into my life. Immediately he became my buddy and basically he's my best friend. And since I bought my own place a few years back, he's always in and out of my house and he has his own room. He keeps his nice clothes here, his sneaker collection, my old Xbox. Basically, it's a second home for him. After my mom and ex-stepdad divorced, he remains very close in my life. They were very neglectful and my brother got me through a bad time and vice versa. My dad's dad, my grandpa, left me a decent amount of money in his will and I was able to buy my home outright. I also have a very decent job, so I am able to save up a lot of my paycheck to buy different things for him. And also, the majority of my money goes into his savings for him for either college or a rainy day. I don't have any other siblings in my opinion apart from him. Three years ago, my mom remarried to a guy with three absolute bratty kids in the 18 to 13 age range. I had already moved out long ago by then. Whenever I go to visit, they scream that there's an intruder in the house. They try to kick my dog, say, what the hell are you doing here? Just nasty little kids. My mom and her partners are what I'd call middle class rich. And the kids are really entitled as a result of never being told no. On Wednesday, I went to visit my mom with my brother. She is always happy to see him, so sometimes he comes along. The 13-year-old kid started yelling about the sweater my brother was wearing and told his dad that it was stupid expensive. My mom then decided to pipe up and said, Chris will give you cash to buy it, won't he? I just looked at her like, what the duck? She said it was his birthday in March, so you can call it a gift, and looked at me expectantly. I just said, sorry mom, I didn't bring any cash with me, and I kind of laughed it off. We left after. But I called her that night and told her it was pretty crappy of her to put me in that spot, and I don't know her kids, nor am I responsible for buying them $500 sweaters. I spoil my brother because I raised him when her and my ex-stepdad were off keeping up with the Joneses and doing coke off each other's tits. Her new stepchildren are her responsibility alone. She said I'm being unfair, and if I can stand to spoil one kid, I can spoil the rest. She mentioned that I'm in a privileged spot and I should be helping with stuff like this to keep my family happy. Am I the a-hole here? Not an a-hole. Seriously not OP's kids, so not really on OP to provide anything for them. She and her husband can buy their birthday gifts when their birthdays roll around. 